Hello, in the third lecture of Power Electronics, we'll be studying about the mathematical models of SCR. The models we'll be studying is called two transistor model and we'll be learning about how actually the SCR operates and how it turns on and off. So two terminal model of SCR is a simplified model. Uh, this is, uh, we know SCR has four regions. Uh, first is P dope, then N, then P and then N. So in this, according to this model, we divide the SCR into two parts. First part is this PNP part. We can call this a PNP VJT. And second part, this NPN part, we can call it an NPN transistor. So a single, a single SCR is, can be divided into two parts uh, and two transistors. First transistor is a PNP transistor. The emitter, first P is emitter, then N base, then P collector and the second part is an NPN uh, BJT first N is collector then P base then N emitter the emitter of the NPN is connected to the cathode the <coughs> uh, emitter of the PNP is connected to the anode and we can see that the base of the PNP is connected to the collector of the NPN and the collector of the PNP is connected to the base of the NPN see if we uh, if we convert this into a symbolic sketch it becomes something like this firstly the anode is connected to the uh, emitter of the pnp bjt the collector of the pnp bjt is connected to the base of the npn bjt the collector of the pnp bjt is connected to the base of the npn bjt again the base of the pnp bjt is connected to the collector of the npn bjt and the emitter of the NPN BJT is connected to the cathode of the SCR. So this is the two transistor model. Now let us observe analytically how this thing actually works. Uh, at first when there is no gate current, uh, there is no base current flowing through this transistor. So this transistor is off. Again, there is no base current flowing through this transistor. Since this transistor is off, there is no current flowing through the collector of this transistor. So this transistor is also off. That is no current flows from A to K, anode to cathode. Now what happens if we increase the IG, if we increase the gate, cur uh, a gate current, what happens is this base current of this VJT is the summation of the collector current of the PNP VJT and the gate current. So when we increase the gate current, we find a base current of this BJ, uh, BJT, this NPN BJT. Since this NPN BJT now has a base current to it, this BJT turns on. Since this BJT turns on, this base current will generate a collector current. How will it, how will it generate? We know IC is equal to beta IB. So since we have a base current, we will have a collector current. But we can see that this collector current is actually the base current of this uh, PNP transistor. That is, in order to generate this collector current, this transistor, there is a base current flowing through this transistor, which turns this transistor on. So, since the base current of this transistor uh, is available, again the collector current of this transistor will be beta times IB. And the emitter uh, there will be an emitter current as well as a result if we apply gate gate uh, if we apply gate current at first the npn bjt turns on which eventually turns on the pnp bjt now we can notice is that when npn bjt turns on what happens is we get a collector current which is actually the base current of the of pnp bjt now, since the base current of the PNP BJT increases, according to this formula, the collector current of the PNP BJT increases. When the collector current of the PNP BJT increases, this the base current of the NPN BJT is the summation of the gate current and the collector current. As a result, the base current of PNP, NPN BJT increases. Again, uh, this is a re recursive process. Again, the base current of the of this BJT, the increase in base current of this BJT increase this current, which eventually increases this current, which eventually increases this current again. As a result, there is a positive feedback going on. Positive. 
there is a positive feedback going on because of that positive feedback the currents keep on increasing when does the increase in current stop uh, we can notice that this is anode and cathode and these are not generally these are not open uh, when these are open no current can flow to anode right so this is connected to an external circuit that may have a resistance a voltage source or something which is connected to the cathode now this increase in the current stops when this voltage source combined with this resistance or the resistance of the external circuit low, no longer is capable enough to increase the current supply to the source as long as this voltage source is capable the currents will keep on increasing when the uh, when the current has reached the uh, reached the highest level uh, that this voltage source can uh, can provide the current stop increasing at that stage this circuit this entire circuit has reached a steady state now at that time if we remove the gate current these two transistors are still off or still on why why are they still on we know if we remove the gate current still we have an ic1 that is still ha we have the collector current which goes to the base of this transistor so this transistor is turned on again since this transistor is turned on there is a base current of this transistor this transistor remains on so there is a steady state so we need the gate current to start the SCR but as when the SCR is in a steady state if we remove the gate current uh, there is no problem and the SCR continues to operate and it continues to remain on. Now let us look at the mathematical analysis. So before we look at the mathematical analysis we can see there are two transistors over here and we have to remember the driving equations of BJD. Firstly collector current is equal to alpha into emitter current that is one equation and the equation is ie emitter current is equal to collector current plus base current in our analysis these two will be the driving equations here alpha is the common base current gain so since there are two transistors let us consider uh, the current gain of transistor 1 is alpha 1 and current gain of transistor 2 is alpha 2 so now we can write for the transistor 1 IC1 is equal to alpha 1 IE1 now uh, we can notice that the anode is connected to the emitter of the first transistor so IA is equal to IE1 similarly cathode is connected to the emitter of the second transistor so IK is equal to IE2 so from here we can also write this is equal to alpha 1 IA <clears throat> again in case of second transistor ic2 will be equal to this current will be is equal to alpha into ie2 that is alpha 2 ie2 so ie2 is equal to ik here we can see ie2 is equal to ik so we can write alpha 2 ik okay now we can see we know in case of in case of the first transistor we can write IB1 from this equation IB1 is equal to IE minus IC that is IE1 minus IC1 now we want to write this in terms of alpha so if we want to write this in terms of alpha and IA we can write that we can see that IC1 is equal to IA into alpha 1 and <clears throat> IE1 will be equal to I A. So we can write I A minus alpha 1 I A or this is equal to <clears throat> 1 minus alpha 1 I A. So we I B 1 the base current of the first transistor is equal to 1 minus alpha 1 into I A. Now we have the equation that <clears throat> IB1 is equal to 1 minus alpha 1 IA we give it equation number 1 now we consider this equation by considering this equation we get IB2 plus IC2 is equal to I IE2 and again IE2 is equal to IK so if we can write is equal to IK if we modify it, we can see that IB2 
if we apply KCL in this node, IB2 is equal to IC1 plus IG. So we can write IC1 plus IG plus IC2 is equal to IK. And now IC, IC2, what is IC2? IC2 is equal to IB1. So we can write IC1 plus IB1 plus IG is equal to IK. Now in, in this IB1 plus IC1 is equal to IE1, the driving equation of a basic BJT. So we can reduce this into IE1 plus IG is equal to IK. Now IE1 is also equal to IA. So we are writing IA plus IG is equal to IK. It is noticeable that in each case, in all the cases, we are def defining every everything in terms of IA, IK and current gain alphas. Why are we doing this? This is a two transistor model. This is just a model of the SCR. This is not the actual SCR. So these base collectors actually do not exist in real. This is just a model. What exists in the real SCR? The anode exists, the cathode exists and the gate exists. So whatever mathematical equation we can derive, we have to derive, we will derive in terms of anode current, cathode current and gate current. And ob obviously the alphas, that is the current gates. So we are naming this equation, equation 2. Now we have already discussed this link between the two transistors. Now we are discussing this link between them. That is the base of the first transistor is connected to the collector of the second transistor. So we get IB1 is equal to IC2. From here we get IB1 is equal to IC2. Now from equation 1 we have already found out 1 minus alpha 1 IA is equal to IC2 is equal to we have already find, found out is equal to alpha 2 into IE2. That, that is alpha 2 into IK. Now if we replace uh, 1 minus alpha 1 IA is equal to we are replacing IK by IA plus IG. This is from equation 2. We are replacing uh, IK from equation 2 and we are finding, finding this equation. If we modify it 1 minus sorry IA minus alpha 1 IA minus alpha 2 IA is equal to alpha 2 IG or we can write IA 1 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to alpha 2 IG or we can find IA is equal to alpha 2 1 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 IG and this is the actual driving equation of our SCR. IA is equal to alpha 2 divided by 1 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 IG. So we can de uh, we can determine the uh, we can determine the current passing through the anode current coming from the anode using this equation. It is to be noted that IG is absolutely necessary to switch on the SCR. If we do not have IG, IA will be zero and the switch, uh, SCR will not turn on. But once the SCR has turned on, a special phenomena occurs. That phenomena is it when once once on alpha one plus alpha two becomes unity. What happens when alpha one plus alpha two becomes unity? This part of the equation becomes infinity. If this becomes infinity, whether we put IG or not, the total current IA will be infinite. So in actual sense as we have discussed earlier as well the ia can never actually be infinite and it will never be infinite it will be limited by the external circuit that is added to added to it by this voltage source and this resistance so ia will actually never be infinite but we require ig to 
uh, switch on the SCR once after we have switched on the SCR if we remove this IG still there will be current flowing through it and the SCR will remain on so this is the mathematical model of the two transistor model of SCR this is all for today thank you if you have any query please let me know